Today I had the question about creating links and uh, wave geometry linker inside of NX and how do I take a part like a casting in this case and make a copy of it and make modifications to that or um, machined features to it in the correct methods. Now there's all sorts of ways people like to go about doing things. Now my preference is to use a container file to create the link between the two. The reason why that is is because now you have, uh, I, in, in my eyes, a higher level of associativity. So in this case, here's my cast part. You can see this is all the features that went into making it are there. If I go into my toe link cast, you'll see that's just my top level. So I'm going to go into assemblies, and I'm going to say create new parent. When uh, NX Siemens decided to put this feature in, creating a new parent, it really made life a lot easier because now I could just make a new parent on the fly. So this is going to be called a toe link. And again, this, this isn't a file that's going to be released as far as something that is going to be sent out for manufacturing. Like the casting file needs to go through a proper release process. The machine file at the end of this needs to go through a proper release process as well. This file, again, it's just a, it's just a, a folder that you're being, it's using as a folder. So it's an item that's being used to create the link between the cast part and the machine part. So you can see there's my toe link, there's my cast. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and create new. And when I create new, it's going to say a new model. I'll give it toe link and call it a machine. And just simply place it. Now that I have that in there, I'm going to go into my wave geometry linker. And inside my wave geometry linker, I want to make sure this says body. I want to select this body. Yes, I want it associative. Uh, I'll uh, just leave hide original turned off. And that just hides the original body in the other file, in the original casting file in this case. Um, use the display properties of the parent part. So if I want to use this exact same display properties, colors, attributes that I've set, you turn this on and it'll do that. Uh, in this case, I'll just turn it off so you can see the difference. You can say fix at current timestamp. So in the model tree, in the model navigator, part navigator, you have the order of sequences that things occur in. If I turn this on, this extraction will occur at that moment of time and anything that I build afterwards will not be reflected in this model. Uh, so and this is kind of useful so if you have several areas in that model that you want to create extractions for for your assemblies and you can turn on your extractions at different timestamps or you can control where that extraction happens. Uh, this is make position independent is just basically allows you to move that component in that assembly that this top level assembly without it uh, being linked back to the original as far as origin wise and this is just copy threads if you have any threads you want to bring that across I don't have any because this is the cast part select OK so you can see there's my original there's my um, link part I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off I'm gonna go into my machine part and I'm gonna say make displayed part now when I look at this as a displayed part you can see there's my link body now this gives me the opportunities to, like in this case, go back to home. I'm going to create a sketch on that face or on that plane. And it's just going to be a circle. I'll go like that. And my size, I'll just say 40. And for this, I'm just going to extrude say symmetrical value, whatever that is, and subtract. Now that that's subtracted, let me go ahead and hide my sketch. I'm going to create another sketch just to drive it home. There we go. Create my sketch there. And then this distance is going to be, we'll say 15. that 200 100 and 50 finish my sketch make my extrusion whoops
And for this, I'm not going to do a subtract. I'm just going to select none. And let me do this. Oops. Settings. There we go. So you can see what I'm doing. And then for this, I'm just going to simply mirror my body. And then subtract target and tools. And then I would do the same thing for this end. You've seen me do it. Do it again and again. And hide that. Now that that's done, you can see there's my link body. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, save this. So now that this has been saved, I'm going to go back into my Tolink Master Assembly. And I'm going to turn on the original Tolink so you can see the original cast part. Let me go ahead and turn on my translucency. So there's my original cast part with my machined features on this machine part. And again, this top level isn't something that's going to get, get released. It's just the data below it that's going to get released. Now, for this, I'm just going to save. And my all my data has been saved. I can come in here and uh, make my reference sets accordingly. Save everything off. And I'm going to close it, part and components. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that machine part. When I look at my machine part, you'll notice that there's my linked body. You'll notice that there's a little question mark. That little question mark is indicating that the, the way that the link is created, or the routing for that link, that top level assembly, is not open. So if something were to happen to that file, for instance, then um, uh, there, there could be a questionable link happening here. So, but this question mark is nice because it gives you that indication that you should really open up that top level assembly. Now, when I go into my history and I open up the actual cast part, oh, sorry, let me open it up down, here we go. Now that cast part has all my features, everything is there. I'm going to switch windows back to my machine part, but you'll notice that that little question mark is still there. It's asking you, well, I still don't know where that link is at. If I go back into my uh, actual, let me switch my window to my cast part, and I make a change, for instance. finish my sketch, come out. You'll notice that I get a little error warning, and the, the reason why I got that little warning is at the end, it made it too long, and this is this is getting chopped off, so the blends are having a hard time going on, but it, it lets you know, in this file, it gives you a warning. The, the danger that you may uh, actually uh, uh, come into is if I go into the machine part, you'll notice that I don't get any warnings here. So you want to pay close attention to the actual original file that you have created to make sure that if you do get any warnings or something moved or didn't get moved. So pay close attention to that original because when you come into the new file or the machine file, the linked, you're not going to get that. It's just going to link back to the original without telling you what's going on. But you'll notice that even with that question mark, even, that, even though that's there, I'm still getting an updated model. And because it knows that it's linked to that other part that's open, it's just not linked through that assembly level. If I want to see this question mark gone away, I can come in here and I can open up that assembly. Now when I open up that assembly and I go back into my machine part, you'll notice that that question mark is gone because now it knows that it's linked through that assembly, the assembly's open. So you don't necessarily have to have that assembly open. It's just saying it doesn't know where that link is at or how it, uh, it's being linked. Um, and when you do that, when you open it up that assembly, now if I have a different body, I can go in and link to a different body through that assembly. So this gives me a really good, easy way to manage what's linked at that assembly level. Maybe I have a different file I bring into that assembly and I want to change my link to that other file. So it's a great way to manage your links within the, the actual um, NX part file. Now, if I go back in, switch my part, and I go into my casting, 
here and I make a change to this no error messages everything comes in cleanly let me switch my part everything is good and then again if I look at my assembly you'll see everything is there as it needs to be so that's my preference is how to create a link for again a, a, a post processed part something that's you design your casting you're gonna machine it those are that are forging you're gonna machine it those are the kinds of things that I'd like to do on my end and just have that file again maybe it's saved on my desktop or if you if you have an instance of team center loaded you can load it in a team center but that file does not have to be released doesn't have to go through the release process because all it is is creating the link between the two files once you create that link you no longer technically need that top level assembly if you're never going to modify that link then uh, if you want to you can technically get rid of it but I always save them just in case